Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in to the Tuesday night solo show with me, Christopher Giannini. This is Winning Cures Everything, and I am glad to be here. It is a super late night. I am missing the Elite Eight uh, Gonzaga USC game, which I'm upset about, but work got in the way and it's got to be done tonight. And I am not going to talk anything about college basketball. This is a football heavy NFL show. And I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to get going and talk to you guys about what's going on in the league and, uh, and share my opinions. But first go to the website. WinningCuresEverything.com. Gary has worked his tail off to get that thing cleaned up. You can find anything about us there. Any extra work that we do, any picks that we make, all of our information is out there. And, and Gary does a good job of keeping that updated and, uh, and, and on there. Secondly, SBRPicks.com slash NCAA. They pay the bills. They take care of Gary and I. And we want to tell you, go to SportsBookReview.com. That is where you can find all your gambling information, all your gambling needs. Bills are paid. Let's get to it. Today, the NFL Pro Days happened for two major powerhouse programs. I think this is ridiculous. Not having a combine, I was okay with because of Pro Days, but I really kind of wish the NFL controlled it a little better than letting these teams control it. What do we get? We get two powerhouse programs that are going to have multiple guys go in the first round and throughout the draft have their pro day at the same time. So organizations have to pick and choose who they're going to go see and who they're not. I think this is insane. I am not a fan of this at all. And, and I, I found it very shocking that three coaches, three organizations that, that I trust the most Three coaches that I think are three of the best coaches in all the NFL. That is, one, William Belichick. That is Kyle Shanahan. And that is Sean. um, Goodness, did you just hear that? That is my dog losing his mind on something. Woo! Anyway, um, and and, and that is uh, Sean Payton from the Saints. All went to Alabama. None of them went to go see Justin Fields. None of them went to go to Ohio State. And, and, and watch those players go through their pro day and Justin Fields go through his. They all went and saw Mac Jones and the Alabama uh, pro day in Tuscaloosa. I found that to be strange. I, I, I might have this wrong. I think there are a clear top five quarterbacks in the NFL in this draft. And I think it is easy that Mac Jones is five in that list. Now there's a world where Trey Lance could be, you know, and Mac Jones could flip because I just haven't seen enough of Trey Lance. But everything I have read from all of the the the, the pro football focus guys, all the people that do analytics, all the people that follow this stuff draft wise more than I do, all have Lance ahead of him. I find it strange that two of the best offensive minds in the league, which is Josh McDaniels, not Bill Belichick, and Kyle Shanahan are seemingly leaning more towards Mac Jones than Justin Fields. And I think he's easily the third best option in this draft. I would probably lean to take him second in this draft. I I think he's an unbelievable talent. He is the most mobile out of every quarterback in the draft. I think the league has gone to that. I think you can do more. He, He gives you more options than any other quarterback, and you don't lose any of the accuracy. This is not a Cam Newton or a Lamar Jackson argument where there are questions about their accuracy, but they're mobile. This is not Josh Allen where there was questions about his accuracy, but he's mobile. This is a guy that is deadly accurate. His numbers are up there with everybody else's in the country. And he has the wheels to create plays when he needs to. I just think... I'm 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 anxious to see is this all smoke and mirrors, but I also don't understand why it would be smoke and mirrors. Who are you lying to? You know, if you spend the draft capital that the 49ers spent to move up to third, you know who you're taking. This is not a thing where we still don't know who we're taking. 
you made up your mind before you sold out for that third pick or else you wouldn't have given up two first round picks. You would have given up one and moved back a little further if you thought your guy could be there or if you were happy with two guys and knew one of them would be there. I don't understand. I I don't think that they would have paid the price that they paid to move up to third. I'd say that if they didn't have a definite decision on who they, who they got. And there are too many people that, that are close to that organization that are close to Kyle that are saying, this is a done deal. It's going to be Mac Jones. Gary and I hashed this out yesterday on winning cures. Everything. I, I just think that's a mistake. Even if Mac Jones, let's say he ends up being the best quarterback in this draft. Okay. Let's say he is the number one quarterback in three years out of this draft. It's still an overpay because I don't think he anybody else is moving up to take him. This is a Daniel Jones situation with the Giants. The Giants were in love with Daniel Jones. That's great. Nobody was moving up to take Daniel Jones. They should have traded back. You could have got Daniel Jones 10 picks later. You could have got Daniel Jones 20 picks later. This is a Mitchell Trubisky situation with the Bears. They moved up. They gave up draft assets to move up one spot because they thought other people in the league were going to move up to get him. I just think that's wrong. I just think that's a mistake. I think these guys are, are are fooling themselves. But maybe I'm wrong. I mean, they obviously do this for a living, and I talk about it. And so, you know, what does that mean? I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see how it plays out, and I'm interested to see if I'm right or if I'm wrong on this. I mean, am I, am I just missing the boat? Are there flaws in Justin Fields' game and everybody else in the league sees them but me? I, I can't understand that. I think that's – I don't know. And I don't know how to properly grade Trey Lance because I just haven't personally watched enough of him. I can tell you that I've watched every big play and every big game and every big throw from all of the other four. Okay. I watched a ton of Zach Wilson. I've watched a ton of Trevor Lawrence. I've watched a ton of Mac Jones and I've watched a ton of Justin Fields. I know those guys. I know everything about them from watching them play football. Okay. On the field, when live bullets are going their way, I've seen them play enough to where I have an opinion on them. It might be wrong. It's been wrong in the past, but quarterback-wise, I've, I've done pretty good about avoiding the bust. Um, I, I can't say that I'm 100% on always picking the home runs, but but all the guys that I've been out on in the past, I, I've i done well with looking back in hindsight saying, yeah, those guys ended up not panning out. And so I, I tend to trust my instincts and 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 – I appreciate it. We'll see how it works out. Not that it's my decision to be made. Um, I'd love for that one day that you talking about a dream job. A dream job would be a general manager in the NFL or working in an NFL front office. I mean, that's a that like if you love football the way we love football, that's got to be the best job in the world, right? Like I, you, this is all you do is analyze players. I mean, it's it's real life fantasy football. But the stakes are unbelievably high. So anyway, um, I I found it very strange that that three offensive coaches that I think are are the three best, three of the best, not the three best, all went and saw Mac Jones. Now some of that is is all three of those guys are close to Saban, okay? And there could be a thing where we're just going to go hang out with Nick, and and that that could have easily been you know, what they were all going to do, okay? That that might have been it, is they don't have any connections to Ohio State. They don't have any connections to the Ohio State coaching staff. They have seen enough to know that they've made their decisions, and they're going to Cowtown and hang out with Nick. And that that could easily be it. I will tell you, I did take joy in a little bit of um, – these pro days are about as fixed as you can ever see. Okay. Like they, there are zero mistakes ever made in a pro day. These quarterbacks, every one of them come out of them looking unbelievable. I tell everybody in the world, don't fall in love with a guy on pro day. Just, you just can't do it because they're all going to look unbelievable. They're all going to look like they are the second coming of John Elway. All right. And, and you just can't fall into that trap. So you never really see mistakes. <laughs> there are throws where Mac Jones did have two big overthrows, pretty big misses in his in his deep ball. Um, and after one, they cut. There's a there's a 
a YouTube, a Twitter video going around that you can find on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and all the different places of after one overthrow, they cut away and they, they see uh, Kyle Shanahan's face and, and kind of his look. And then another one where they see Bill and Josh and they just are like, what was that? Uh, so I, I did revel in that being the, you know, the, the, the hater that I am, I'm sure. Uh, I, I'll catch crap for that. I'm okay with that. Um, but, but I thought, huh, I don't, I think it's been a decade since I've seen a, a you know, a missed throw in, in a pro day from any quarterback. It happened at Alabama to a guy that everyone's moving up for. I, I thought that was strange. Yeah. Y'all just ignore the guy in Ohio right now. All right. Just ignore that guy because that guy's a stud. I think he's going to be a freak. Anyway, staying in the NFL. Uh, I, I was going to say an old friend popped his head up, making noise, making news, but uh, it, it'd be a pretty loose interpretation of the word friend. Um, Hugh Jackson is back in the news, back in the cycle. I guess he, he hadn't had his, his fix of attention lately. He's whining and crying. I think he's trying to write a book. Anyway, selling something. He's saying that he was lied to about the rebuilding at uh at the Browns and the plan that happened and and he is a victim of of the circumstances that happened in Cleveland and not uh and, and it wasn't his fault and he also claims there was some weird secret extension after they went 0 and 16 after they went 0 and 16 that is coming off of a year where they went 1 and 15 you're talking about this man was 1 and 31 over two years, and you want to try to convince people that secretly the organization gave you an extension? Come on. The next year, you coached, I don't know, four games, five games before you got canned. And the second you got canned, I listen, we're not talking about Bill Belichick. We're not talking about Jimmy Johnson. We're not talking about the, the greatest coaches in the history of football walked in the door. I'm telling you, Greg, they spell my first name with two G's because the second G stands for genius, Williams. Okay, one of the dumbest people to ever grace the NFL. How he lasted for 15 years, I don't know. And the single worst head football coach in the history of the NFL that got to coach 16 games, Freddie Kitchens, took over from you. And they rolled off like four or five wins with a team you couldn't win with out of 32 odd chances. What are we talking about? You're some hang on. You're some sort of victim? That, that, that something somehow this was unfair to you? Two of the worst coaches in the history of the NFL took over that organization behind you. Okay? And they won with those guys. So so what does that say about you, Hugh? What does that say? That says, that says you are undoubtedly, unquestionably, the worst coach in NFL history. Okay? Like, you and Freddie Kitchens are in a fist fight for the bottom. All right? Congratulations. I, I, if you're trying to hawk a new book, if you're trying to, to, to get you a new TV gig or, or a new NFL gig somewhere in a front office or on a coaching staff, good luck to you. Okay? I, I wish for you to be gamefully employed. I just don't want it to be in Cleveland. All right, I, I would I would love for a team that I love to be able to go against you on a regular basis. That would that would thrill me. Um, I, I don't I don't see him as a threat. I, I just don't know what in the hell he's doing. If if I had been as bad as he was at what I did for a living, I think I would run away. But now I, now obviously I mean he he's forgotten more about football than I'll ever know because I'm just a moron that talks about it. And he actually did it. But man, in the caliber of the best 32 men on earth doing it, he was the worst. He was clearly and undoubtedly the worst. And yes, that organization had chaos. Jimmy Haslam is is a very difficult person to work for, seemingly. And, and there seems to be a lot of problems in that front office over his time before him during him, after him, but, but I say a little bit after him, it, it kind of seems to have stabilized. Now we've had two years without a lot of massive turnover. 
Okay, that's not a long time. Can we make it three? Can we make it four? Can we build on what we've got and not continue to be the laughing stock of the league? We'll have to see. Yet to be determined. But right now, that team's not a whole hell of a lot different with Stefanski coaching it as it was with Freddie and Hugh. And that was just bad. That was just laughably bad. And there's no other way to say it. Moving on. Last NFL topic for the day. The NFL is going to 17 games. It is official. We're going to have an odd number of games. You're, there, there is no going 500 anymore. You will either be above 500 or below 500. And I'm okay with all of it. I'm okay with all of it. Let me tell you what I love about this. It is one more week of more football. It is one more week of the NFL, which is the sport that I love, the sport that I need. When it ends, I am I am devastated and I am upset and I just feel like a part of me is gone and it's going to be months before it ever comes back. But you know what? It's always coming back. It's always, always going to come back. And this year it's coming back bigger, stronger, faster. Here's what I'm confused about. Not, I'm not confused. I'm curious. Here's where the curiosity wheel begins to spin in my brain. How many teams are going to buy into inflated stats from these players? See, some of these teams are so analytically driven, they, they they're, nothing's getting by them, okay? They know all the answers before you got the questions, all right? They're really smart. They're very good at what they do. Some of these teams appear to be ran by morons. And I'm very interested to see, is some agent going to be able to have a receiver have that one extra set of games, set a new career high in touchdowns, yards, catches, whatever it is, tackles, blocks, whatever, and then go out and sell that guy to a hell of a deal for 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 an organization. I'm sure surely these organizations are understanding stats are about to get inflated and and we need to prepare ourselves for the agents cuz it's not going to be the players and it's not going to be the organization so much. It's going to be agents talking talking these guys into hey man, look at the numbers he put up. Nobody in history has ever put up these numbers. That's right. Because nobody in history has ever played a 17 game regular season. Okay. So I'm, I'm interested to see what the numbers actually look like in, in the world of baseball. They're so afraid to move numbers, move the amount of games to less or more or anything else because the numbers matter so much. And, and in football, they just don't give a damn. They're just doing the right thing for the sport. No matter the history behind it. I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. anybody who tries to cry, uh, player health issues and all that stuff. Listen, I think these guys know what they're getting into. What I would rather have is give them two extra games and one extra bye week. Give me 18 games. Give me two more weeks of football. And, uh, and, and, and then they can have more time to rest and, uh, and that sort of thing happen. Um, but neither here nor there that, you know, I just, I think these guys know the risk. Okay, the game is day. It's a dangerous game. I'll tell you this: if I had a son, I would not let him play. Now, does that make me a hypocrite that I love the game, but I wouldn't let my kid play it? No. But here's the thing: is that there's a little bit of tongue in cheek to that. My kid's not going to be athletic enough to play it. Okay, I've got two kids of my own right now. They're girls, and and they have no athletic ability. They have no coordination whatsoever. I have zero athletic ability. My wife less athletic ability than that so it's not it's not like you know that that we we would have produced the future gale sayers and we're just not showing them to everybody okay we're just we're just not letting the cat out of the bag and the whole world is missing out on something but also i i just don't i don't know that it's worth the risk and i think there are other sports out there to play but i love this sport and i'm good to the men that keep playing it i'm gonna keep watching them and I'm going to support them. I'm going to support them with my dollars. I'm going to support them with my ratings. I'm going to support them with the content that I produce. And 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 I'm and I'm going to always support them. 
I'm usually always going to be on the side of the players, always going to be on the side of the people that are taking the biggest risk. Um, but, but that's usually, okay. I don't make blanket statements like that or blanket commitments because those people aren't above making stupid decisions. And then you're going to force me to, to decide with the other people that's happened. That's okay. Um, but I'm excited about more football. And, and I think anybody who's not, you're, you're just trying to pick a fight about something that I don't, I don't understand what, what those people do. I think some people like to be contrarian just to be contrarian. Okay. If you genuinely care about the safety of these players, I don't know how you're watching it to begin with. Okay. And there are times where I'll see a hit and it'll, it'll take my breath away with my fat ass sitting on the couch. And I'll kind of think to myself, man, I, I kind of feel bad watching this. Like I just sat here and watch, and I hate when they replay it over and over and over again. I won't watch the replays because I just, I, there's a little guilt that sinks in, but at some point in time, man, that kind of, that guilt goes away and the sport just grabs my heart. I love football. I have since I was a little boy, as a fat kid that didn't have any athletic ability, there was one place in this world for me, offensive line. That's it. That's that's where I got to be. I wasn't good at offensive line. So they moved me to defensive line once I got bigger and stronger and faster and could play a little bit. Um, and then that lasted for about five minutes before I couldn't play anymore at all, ever again. And that happens. Um, but the sport matters to me. And, uh, and I'm really glad we're getting 17 games. I'll take that extra game. I will absolutely take that extra week of football all day long. My favorite thing about it is here's all I want. Here's all I'm asking. And I don't know if they're doing this or not. I need them to keep the calendar the exact same and bump it back one week. Because, see, both my children, this is a little personal, both my children were born the Monday after the Super Bowl of the year that they were born. Good kids, good girls. They knew daddy needed to watch the Super Bowl. They came the next day. This past year, Super Bowl fell on thing one's birthday. That's going to happen about every four to five years, however the calendar works or whatever. It's going to fall on the day of their birthday at some point. We just... That, that's when business decisions get made, <laughs> okay? And this is, if they bump it back a week, my whole life opens up. I, I no longer have to worry. Not only do I not have to worry, the bye week between the championship game and Super Bowl Sunday falls on the week of their birthdays. And life is just perfect for me. So if, I, 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 I have said hateful horrible things that if God was looking down and listening, is it very disappointed in me about Roger Goodell? But if he could overlook those and do me one little favor and just kick this season back one week from that extra 17 week and don't start it a week earlier, I'll be the happiest guy alive. And I'll apologize for all those horrible things that I ever said. So that's the NFL. One more topic. I got to hit on Major League Baseball. Now, this was as much as I wax poetic and I speak nice about football, and I love football. But my very first love, the very first love of my entire life was baseball. One, one very, very young, Mr. Mr. Giannini, was baseball. Opening day is Thursday, April 1st. I will take on my ritual uh, day off work. I will find myself propped up somewhere where I can watch a multitude of games. And I will not leave that place for the duration of the day. And anyone that calls me, if it seems important, I might take it. But probably not. I'm just going to get zoned in. And that is the one day that I just engulf myself in baseball. I love it. I've been to one opening day in my life that was in Cleveland. Man, that was a long time ago. That might have been eight, nine years ago. Hell, it might have been a decade ago. Um, Long ago. Um, I would love to go to another opening day. Um, Maybe one day that'll happen. It's not going to happen this year. Can't swing that. Uh, But I'm excited. I'm excited about baseball getting here. This, This is the one sport that most of the country overlooks out of kind of the big sports. 
but I'll never stop loving it ever. And I am super excited about the young talent that is in the sport. The things I'm not excited about the two big bullies on the block are the two teams I hate more than any other team. And I just can't figure out for the life of me how this happens. Okay. But the prohibitive favorite, I don't, I definitely just didn't even say a real word there. Um, prohibitive favorite, maybe. Mm, Gary's not here to help correct me on that. Um, the big favorite for the World Series is the Yankees and the Dodgers. I will tell you that if that happens, I'm just going to set my eyeballs on fire, guys. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be good the next day. We'll come on the show. It'll, it'll be ugly. It'll be nasty. Okay? But it's, it, I, I can't handle it. Emotionally, I just can't handle it. All right? But that's not my pick. That's not my pick. I got I got picks. Okay? Now, I never hit on any of these picks, by the way. Because I don't take chalk. I don't believe in it. It's immoral. I don't do it. I got one homer pick out of the whole bunch. Just one. And I got one where I'm straddling a fence. I don't like doing that. I feel like it's weak and it's not the right thing to do. But I kind of am in love with both these guys. So, my Cy Young. NL Cy Young pick, Blake Snell of your San Diego Fathers. I love this Padres team. You're going to see a theory of that, a theme of that going through. That I think this is the best San Diego baseball team I've ever seen in my life, and they're really, really talented. Adding Blake Snell to that roster was a huge, huge pickup, and I like Blake Snell's chances to win the NL Cy Young. Going up to the American League, I'm staying in my damn division, and I don't like it. I don't like it not one bit. I would love for this guy's arm to fall off, OFF off. But Tyler Glasnow is one of the best pitchers I've ever seen. His stuff is just nasty, and I I think he's probably going to win the Cy Young. Okay. I just – it it would make me a little sad. Not a little sad, a lot of sad. I want to beat him. I want to beat him. But – the Rays are really good. If you tell me it's got to be the Rays or the Yankees, give me the Rays a thousand times over and over and over again. But I'm going with Tyler for my AL Cy Young. That that was the hardest pick I had to try to find a Cy Young I wanted. Last year I hit both Cy Young winners. I don't know if y'all know that or not. I, I may have mentioned it a few hundred times on the show. MVP. MVP. Here's my homer pick. Here's my straddling the fence pick, okay? My homer pick. I'm going back to the well I went to last year for the AL. It's Rafael Devers. Last year, the Red Sox fell completely apart. Bounce back year. They're super young. I don't think they have the – listen, I'm a realist. I don't think they have the pitching to win the division. Okay? I just don't. I would love, 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 love for them to win the division. But I don't think they've got the pitching to do it. But I do think this offense is going to be scary good – and they're going to be a lot of fun to watch. They're really young. They're really talented. They've got three leaders in Xander, Rafi, and and JD. And I'm telling you, any of those three could win the MVP. Wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't shock me. I'm going with Rafi. He's my guy. He's the best out of all of them. I, I think he's the best player in baseball, bar none. I love him. He, he's my favorite player in the world to watch. And uh, I'm desperately trying to save up money to go to Boston this year and get into Fenway and watch Mr. Devers swing that bat and uh, flash that leather. MVP for the NL is where I'm straddling the fence. And these guys are not chalk, but they're definitely at the top of the list. So you can give me all the shit you want for the straddle in the fence. And I definitely can wear the, 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 the egg on my face of, of kind of picking chalky here. I, th- I think it's going to be either Juan Soto or the newly minted $400 million man, um, Fernando Tatis Jr. Okay. Tatis worries me a touch because he came out of spring training with a little weird shoulder injury. And that worries me. That stresses me out a little bit. They've said it's nothing major. It's something he's dealt with for a very long time. I need him to stop dealing with that. And I don't want to see him. Get his money and then show the world. This is why they gave me all that damn money. I want the whole world to know 
Fernando Tatis Jr.'s name when this season's over with. Not just baseball fans, okay? And not just like casual sports fans that that recognize his name on the clicker um, going across ESPN, all right? I want the whole world. I want my mom who doesn't watch baseball at all to know, do you know who this Fernando Tatis Jr. guy is? Holy crap, he's the best kid I've ever seen in my life. I think he's amazing. I think he's amazing. The injury bug scares me. I'm going to hedge. I'm going to hedge. Oh, God, I kind of hate myself for even saying that. I've already committed now, so I have to tell you the second name, even if I want to back out of that. But the second name is Juan Soto. Juan Soto. Had kind of a down year last year. Whatever. Weird COVID year. The Nats didn't look good. I think the Nats are going to have a bounce back year. Don't know if they can win the division. Don't know how good they're going to be or not. I think he's one of the best young stars in all of baseball. Listen, if you haven't followed baseball in a long time, do me a favor or ever. Pick a team. Pick a team. Any team. Not the Yankees and the Dodgers, please. But pick any other team than that. Just follow them. Follow them for a season, guys. You're going to enjoy it. I promise you. There is so much young. You probably want to stay away from the Pirates this year, too. But there's so much young talent in baseball right now. Baseball is in the best hands it's ever been in. There are some young stars that, like casual baseball fans, have never heard of before that are going to blow your mind. They're going to blow your mind how good they are, how exciting it is. It is. And and I love this sport. I'm never going to stop. And the, the I, when I can't think it can get any better, the new young stars that come up every year, every couple of years, just seem to keep getting better. And I think I, I don't. I'm just impressed. I'm in awe. I love it. My World Series pick is my San Diego Padres over winning the World Series, hoisting their. I think it's their first World Series ever, hoisting their first World Series championship over. Maybe a little, maybe a little long shot. Maybe a little, mm, yeah. The Toronto Blue Jays. I think this team is really young. Super biased. Super biased here. Uh, Vladimir, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. looks like he's ready to have a massive breakout year this year. His dad, his dad was up there. Okay, like he wasn't David Ortiz for me. He wasn't King Griffey Jr. He he wasn't Tony Gwynn, but he was just under those guys of just complete worshipped the man when I was a kid. And I see his son play, and I, I just it just does something to me, and I want good things for him. And then I look at that roster, and I see what the, the, the Blue Jays have been doing, building. Man, I think they're good. I think they're talented. I, th- I think they're one of the best teams in the American League. I think they're one of the best teams in the country. If they can stay healthy, I think they can win it all, man. I really do. I, I might be crazy. That this is definitely not chalk. This is definitely not chalk. But I like them. So, my Padres, my San Diego Padres, against the Toronto Blue Jays in the World Series, and I think the Padres are taking it. That's my picks, guys. That's my MLB picks. Uh, I appreciate y'all jumping in with me. On this Tuesday evening, y'all will all be getting this, I think, Wednesday morning is when we have to put it out. Uh, if I do it right, I didn't have to do this one three times. It looks to be a first-time winner. Appreciate that. Thanks for joining me. And uh, you'll catch Gary and I live Wednesday afternoon, evening, whatever the hell time work works with us. We'll be coming to you. We'll be breaking down the tournament and uh, and and hitting up any other news that happens for the day. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.